Hey friends and welcome to a new video. I'm in this new setting. Hopefully you like it. I'm really pumped to be here. Today I'm going to talk about a topic that's a part of the interview preparation phase. So since the how to ace a marketing interview video was so well received, it touched so many people's lives and it was found to be very useful, I figured I can do spin-offs of that video because there were pieces of that interview preparation phase that I couldn't go into that much detail in in that video. So that one really really covers an overview, uh, a good like step-by-step -step way to prepare for an interview and I go into the details of how to prepare for some common questions and how to answer those questions in that video. Again, it wasn't specific to any certain marketing role but for a generalist role. So if you haven't watched that video, that is a good one. You can start with that but in this video, I'm going to cover the questions that you need to ask the hiring manager during the interview so that you can get a better understanding of the role so that you can position yourself as a high value candidate and so that you can actually do your own due diligence for the company and for the role that you're interviewing for. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started because I have a long list of questions I want to take you through and this is actually the set of questions that I personally use whenever I am interviewing for any role, whenever I have a relevant conversation that I can bring up these questions in. I have these questions in a Notion document, a separate document that I use. And when I need to duplicate it, I duplicate it. So I would always have this document in front of me as well as some other notes for the interview that I've prepared. Whenever the time comes for me to ask questions during the interview, I bring these up and I go through each of them by category, by relevance, depending on the flow of the conversation. But this is always a separate document that I keep open in front of me. And I usually take notes as I'm in the interview or as I'm in the meeting and when the hiring manager is answering these questions for me. So with that said, if you want a copy of these questions for yourself so that you don't have to go through typing them as I speak during the video, I'm actually going to link a free Notion template right below so that you can go ahead and duplicate the template if you use Notion or if you don't, then you can just copy and paste the questions into whatever note-taking application you prefer to use. The link to the template will be in the description box as well as the comments below. So be sure to go ahead and check it out and make sure that you are asking these questions in your next interview because I assure you it's going to make a huge difference. I have my questions listed in five different categories. Number one is the role, number two is the interviewer, number three is the culture, number four is the team, and number five is finally the process, the pay, the perks, and all of that. Let's go ahead and start with the questions under the role category. The questions here are going to help you evaluate the fit between the role and your skills and experience. And these are going to help you understand things like what a day-to-day -day looks like for this role, how this role works, what is the context for this role being open and available in the team, and many other things. Number one question you should ask is what makes this role available? Is it available because the previous person left or is it a new role? This is going to give you context in terms of the organization, where the role sits and whether or not this is a brand new role and the impact that you're likely going to be expected to create within the team. Next one is what kind of additional responsibilities can be gained in time? So this is going to give you an understanding of the growth trajectory of the role within the organization. So what is the role that this one can grow into? To, it's going to give you an idea of what your next couple of years or next couple of, I don't know, months maybe if you're very fast is going to look like in this company. Next one is the question that I suggest you highlight, you bold, and you don't forget to ask during the interview. And it is, what do you want this role to accomplish within the first 30, 60, 90 days? Can they break it down for you and explain what are the things that you are initially going to be tasked with and what are the main goals that you're going to be working towards? This is a very important one because it gives you the picture of what your first couple of months at this company and at this role is going to look like. And in some cases, this might be a challenging question for the interviewer in case they don't know, they haven't planned for what the initial goals will look like, but they may be expecting that from you and they may be expecting you to come into the picture with a 90 day plan. And again, that's important for you to know because then that's how you can prepare better for this role and that's how you can also 
better sell yourself for this role as well. Next one is again a very important one. How do you measure success for this role? What are the key metrics that this role will be evaluated by? Next one again is a very important one. I know I'm going to keep saying this, but this one's a key question that you absolutely need to ask. And that is what have been the biggest challenges for this role? Or if the role is a new one, then what would you expect to be the biggest challenges for this role? So as the hiring manager answers these questions, it is going to give you an idea about how you can position yourself better. And in some cases, you might also face the reality that you will not be very happy in this role as well. Sometimes they might mention these challenges that might scare you off or that might really push you away. And that is also very important because you don't want to get a job. You don't want to proceed with that interview process if that role isn't the right match for you and if that's going to be a waste of your time. So these are all very important to give you that context. But on the flip side, these are very important for you to position yourself as a strong candidate because you're going to hear these challenges and you're going to maybe bring up these experiences from the past where you've also come across that challenge and then how you have resolved it and in some cases maybe how you would react to these challenges as well you can also talk about that too Another question I really like to ask is what are some of the current efforts that have been successful or have not been successful in a certain area? So if you're interviewing for, that word is pretty difficult to pronounce. Anyway, so if you're interviewing for a specific role or if it has a specific task that you are mainly going to be focused on, you can ask what have been some of the successful results and what have been some of the successful campaigns, for example. So some of the successes that they have seen as well as some of the specific like jobs specific challenges that they have seen. So say that one of your main tasks is going to be creating content for product onboarding and working on email newsletters. I'm making this up, but if that was the case, then ask them what have been some of the successful things that they have done so far for these specific areas. So this can give you an idea of what to double down on or what to cut out or bring in as new practices. As you go into the details of the role and if you're specifically interviewing for mid to senior level roles maybe, you will definitely need to go into the details of certain things like, I don't know, maybe having a conversation about their most epic product launch and the one that also failed as well to learn lessons from their failures and learn lessons from their successes as well. The final one under the role category is asking about any skills or experience that is a must have, a non-negotiable for this role or any skills or experience that the interviewer wished that you had for this role. This is going to help you understand about your shortcomings, if you are indeed a good fit or if they have a list of must have futures that you actually don't have. The answer to this question is going to tell you exactly that and to also tell you if you can overcome those shortcomings, if there are things that you can learn in a short period of time or if it is a skill or experience that you don't have and don't intend to have in the near future future, this will give you the answer to that. Next category is the interviewer and I have much less questions here so don't worry. The questions here are designed for you to get more information, more context about how that person, that person that you're having the conversation with feels to be working in that company as well as how their role has evolved and stuff like that. So the question I suggest you to ask is how has your role and the company evolved since you joining the team? This gives you an idea of how the company approaches the growth of their employees in general but also the growth of the company itself as well and as this person is talking about their experience with the company you're going to be getting a sense of how they feel about being there as well which is I think the most important part about having this conversation and asking these questions. The next one is why did you join the company and did you find what you expected? And finally connected to that what do you like most about working here? So these questions basically give you an idea of how that person feels to be there. Are they pumped to be there? Are they happy to be there? what do they appreciate most about being in that company working in their roles and what does a day look like for them they might also end up telling you about their experience their day-to-day -day, their struggles their successes what makes them tick about that company what makes them wake up in the morning and all of those good things that are going to also get you lit up about that role and that company next section my friends is about culture and this one I really like first thing I want you to ask here is what does it mean to be a culture fit at this company. I really like talking about culture with companies and hiring managers because I'm all about the culture and the values a company stands for and I need to have a good match. I need to have a good feeling that we are indeed meant to be with each other before making a decision about any company. So yes, this wasn't always the case. When I was a junior marketer, when I was just starting out, I wasn't really paying that much attention to culture 
sure but that really bit me somewhere and I really did learn my lesson over the years so now I always pay attention to the culture and to really try and see if we do share similar values and a similar work ethic and a similar vibe as well so if you're like me on the topic of culture I absolutely don't want you to skip this question and the next one which is what kind of people thrive in the marketing team here or if you're not interviewing for a role in marketing all these questions can really be applicable to any other role as well what kind of people generally thrive in this company or the specific team that you're looking to work with so with the first question you got an answer about the overall culture the overall values within the general broader organization but now if you kind of you know look into it from a micro perspective you need to also know what kind of people thrive and work best and fit best into that specific team that you're looking to work with so if you're in it for a role in the marketing team then have the interviewer talk to you about the people and the experience of being a part of that team in marketing all right so this brings us to the fourth section which is team and here I have a couple more questions who will I be working most closely and this is a relevant question in case you are already not talking to the person that you will be working the most closely with. In some cases you'll find that some of these questions won't be relevant for each interview that you have, at least not 100% of them. So make sure that the questions you're asking, the questions that you pick and select and ask in your conversation are relevant to your conversation. So if you're already talking to that person, no need to ask this, but this could come in handy. Next one is what is the boss's leadership style? Again, if you're not talking to the person that you'll be working the most closely with, then you can definitely ask this question and get an idea of what it's like to work with that specific person because you're gonna work the most closest with with that person and you want to ideally see if you can get along with that person so if any of you have had horrible bosses in the past you will know the importance you will understand the importance of asking these questions so you get me and next one is what are the team dynamics like and this is again going to give you an idea of what it's like to work with that team these are all important questions you've asked about the company you have asked about the role you've asked about your boss now ask what is it like to be a part of that team have them talk to you about the size of the team the growth of the team the kind of people that work in the team and hear all those details and the final question in this section is what are the team members work styles so do they work independently do they really work collaboratively what is the frequency of meetings daily huddles and stuff like that to help you visualize what it is going to be like to work in that company and that team and you know what if you actually end up asking these questions you're gonna realize that once you have answers to these you're going to have so much more information than what you've initially been introduced to when you talked about the skill sets the experience and when you were answering questions about yourself now it's time for you to ask for you to learn more and for you to really understand visualize the experience of being a part of that team and you know what in most cases you actually spend more time with the people that you work with versus your own family so you really need to see what it is going to be like to be a part of them and finally you're gonna wrap up the conversation with the fifth section of questions which is process pay and perks a very important one I know everyone's curious about this one but most candidates actually end up only asking these questions in their interviews and if you only ask these questions the information that you are going to get from the interviewer the hiring manager is going to be very limited but not only that you'll also miss out on the opportunity of learning more about the role and that visualization and understanding the experience so anyway with that said the final questions I want you to ask are what does the interview process look like what are the next steps which is going to tell you when you can expect to hear back from them and when to also follow up as well, which by now you probably know is a crucial step of any interview process. And finally, what is the compensation range and the benefits? And most likely this will already be covered by the hiring manager or the interviewer. You likely won't even have to open up this conversation about compensation, but if you end up needing to do so, then it's totally fine as well. You can definitely ask about the range and the benefits and have them give you more information on this. All right, so that is a long list of questions, I know, but as I said, pick and select the ones that you find the most relevant for your conversation, the 
the ones that haven't been already answered by the hiring manager as they were telling you more information about the role and the company. So just, you know, have the list in front of you, as I said, and bring up the questions whenever you feel it's the right time, as well as the questions that you are curious to know more about. So with that said, this is only a part of the interview process that you need to be prepared for. There are many other steps that you need to consider as you prepare for an interview. The other video that I mentioned in the beginning of this one is very helpful in terms of understanding the general steps to prepare for an interview as well as some of the common questions and how to answer them. But I find that even with all the information available online, even in my content, there was still a big piece that is actually missing, which is the actual preparation. Like how do you prepare exactly when you have a job post in front of you? How do you prepare exactly for job posts that you have an interview for tomorrow? So covering the steps is one thing. Looking at the common questions and answers, having your questions ready, those are all pieces of the puzzle, but that is actually not the main component. So I realized this when recently I had a series of quite challenging interviews, to be honest. For a couple of weeks back to back, I had many interviews with top companies in the world. And I realized that as I'm preparing for all those interviews, I actually have a system that I follow every single time. It's not just those key steps that I covered in the other video, but it's actually a mindset. It's actually an approach to preparing. I actually came up with a marketing interview preparation crash course. I know that's a very long name, but it ended up being this amazing piece of content that I think is extremely, extremely helpful and valuable. I truly and wholeheartedly wish that this piece of content existed, this type of course existed before I had to go through hundreds of interviews throughout my career and went through so much frustration, so much tears, and so many emails that started with the word unfortunately. So I can honestly say that if you're in a phase of your life where you are actively looking for jobs, where you are applying and having interviews, this is a game changer for the interview itself. The course is not designed to help you with your cover letter, your resume, your application, but it is actually helping you specifically and only for your interview preparation. And I assure you, I have seen consistent results with this preparation system and so have many other people who have worked one-to-one -one with me as well. Anyway, I'm going to cut this story short and I'm gonna leave a link in the description as well as the comments for you to check out if you are interested in really up-leveling your interview skills and acing every single interview that you go into and go into those conversations with confidence and secure job offers from your dream companies. All right, ready to wrap up this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and useful. And don't forget that I will leave those links mentioned throughout the video in the description, as well as the comments. Make sure to grab your copy of the list of questions we covered in the video, as well as checking out that interview crash course as well, if that's something interesting and needed for you right now. And I am signing off. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Take care guys.